this could be a hot take, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. Baseball is the best it's been in quite some time. From the World Baseball Classic to the first few days of the regular season, I am falling in love with the game of baseball all over again. And today's recap is honestly going to be one of the best that we've ever made in the four years of doing this. Today is going to be insane. We had so many games that came down to the wire. Belly Bombs, as you just saw, they're back. Shohei Otani and Jordan Alvarez, they went off as well. Ha Seung Kim, he sent San Diego into a frenzy and the San Francisco Giants hit seven home runs in a single game. Yeah, baseball was crazy yesterday. We post these recaps every single day, so if you want to stay up to date on the game of baseball, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Also, if you're going to any games or concerts anytime soon, use code FUZZY on SeatGeek to save yourself 20 bucks off. Now, usually I don't say this, but this is one of those recaps where you cannot miss a single game. Every single one was special in their own right, so do not click off some of the best April baseball I've ever seen. So as you just saw, Juan Soto, he finally ran into his first home run of the season, 410 feet for a two-run blast. Now, Arizona, they got back into the game pretty quickly, but Manny Machado, he stole the lead right back for the Padres in the bottom of the second. Both Ryan Weathers and Ryan Nelson, they settled down. Those were the starting pitchers in yesterday's game. They settled down. They did not allow a single run over the next three frames, and the scoreless streak was broken by CC, not Sabathia. Corbin Carroll, he's doing it for all the short kings out there because I think he's 5'8", maybe 5'9", but he yanked one. He ties it at 3-3, and it's not tied anymore. The potential future Hall of Famer, Evan Longoria, he now has 332 career home runs. He gives the Snakes the lead. And journeyman Scott McGuffey enters and... Um I tried to warn you guys, these games are insane. David Dahl, he ties it going the other way. And Ha Seung Kim, he seals it back-to-back -back home runs, sends San Diego into a frenzy, a wild parade. The vibes were unmatched. And I was watching that game on my couch and thinking, I wish I was there right now because it looks so much fun. Now, real quick, before we talk about the Angels versus the Mariners, I do want to update you guys on Anthony Rendon. He has been suspended for four games. He's also been fined as well for that incident with an A's fan. So he was suspended five games last year. So since he signed with the Angels nearly four years ago, he's played a grand total of 159 games. He's been suspended for nine games. Yeah, that Rendon contract is looking terrible. But I mean, some good did come out of that incident as the Angels have been playing on fire lately. Reed Detmers, he didn't have his best stuff per se. He still looked nasty, but, but that's all okay because just like the Avengers have a Hulk, the Halos have an Otani. Now, before we talk about Otani, Luis Renjifo, he's looking great already. He knocked in Jake Lamb twice between the second and the fourth inning. I I forgot that Jake Lamb even existed. Then again, I forgot that unicorns existed, but there's one right there. Otani goes 431 feet basically to dead center, his second of the season. Taylor Ward, he joined in on the fun as well, smoking a three-run blast in the eighth inning. He's hitting 421 with six RBIs and two home runs on the season. Brandon Jury, he contributed with an RBI extra base hit. Like, that is a massive win if you're an Angels fan because Seattle, obviously, they're going to be competing with the Astros and the Mariners and the Rangers all season long, so anytime the Angels can take a dub over any of those teams, that's huge. This game was absolutely insane. The Tigers and the Astros, I can't believe I'm saying that, but that's how good April baseball has been so far. Eric Koss, he is such an underrated hitter in my opinion. He plays two on a single in the fifth, and Detroit, they earn a few more huge runs in the fifth inning. As Javier Baez, his single made it three to nothing, and Torkelson's eye extended the lead yet again. Hopefully, Jordan doesn't come up with runners on, and there it is. Pop goes the weasel as Frieza from Dragon Ball Z would say. Say. That's his 100th career home run already. This dude is going to hit 500. Now, luckily for the Tigers, they have a talented lefty as well. Not as good, but Riley Green, he unleashed a monster home run the other way over everything. The Tigers, they grabbed the lead back, but it was short-lived as Jose Abreu, he hits one just outside the outstretched glove of Austin Meadows. In my opinion, Akil Badu catches that. But moving on, we needed extras for this one where Matt Beerling saves the Tigers 430 feet on that no-doubt shot. The Tigers, they barely hold on, but an epic game already. It's been five days and we have one of the games of the year. The Guardians and the A's was also a game of the year candidate, but before we talk about that, the Yankees and the Phillies, this game wasn't even close because we talked about how Jordan has 100 home runs. Glaber also hit his 100th career home run after his RBI single in the first. He showed off that easy opposite field pop. Again, it's crazy for a middle infielder to have 100 career home runs in a career, but he's 
not even 27 years old yet, so I gotta tip my cap to Glaber Torres. Nasty yeah. Nestor was out there doing his thing. One earned run over five innings, and Anthony Rizzo started another rally with a long home run in the fifth, or at least it looked long, but it was not even 400 feet. That right field porch in Yankee Stadium is that short. Newcomer Franchi Cordero laced a 113 mile per hour RBI double, and Trevino, he brought him home. The Phillies dropped to 0-4. They are MLB's last winless team. They have to get back into the win column, or they're gonna have to speed run Bryce Harper's return because they need him. Guys, I'm not joking. This Guardians A's game was one of the best regular season games my eyes have ever witnessed, and only 3,000 people were in attendance. I feel bad because they missed out on a great game. 3,000 people, that's less than what the Aviators pull, the AAA team for the Oakland Athletics. But anyways, I'm just gonna go ahead and show all of the punches and the jabs. Both the A's and the Guardians were throwing jab after jab, haymaker after haymaker. Ramon Laureano, his two-run home run put the game out of reach, right? Not so fast. This Guardians team, we know from last year, they never give up. They almost play better when they're losing. Will Brennan's cannon arm in right field. He pretty much saves the game. Then you have Ahmed Rosario with two RBIs. He brought it to within one, and then he tied it. And there's Jay Ram with an RBI triple sent from the heavens because that lefty swing made the ball spin as soon as it hit the ground. So it spun away from the A's outfielder. I think his name is Capel or something like that, Capel. And then Jay Ram later on, he made me want to run through a brick wall. I did not think that Jay Ram was gonna run because Seth Brown does have a pretty good arm, but there he is, he scores. Class A, he's too nasty, he's gonna close this one. Okay, Seth Brown had other ideas in mind. 432 feet. Seth Brown could easily hit 30 plus this year, just saying. Regardless, the Guardians, they do storm back yet again as Jay Ram and some bad ace pitching made it 12 runs. Eli Morgan eventually got three outs before the A's could get 12 runs, so if you do the math, that means that the Guardians, they win. What a battle. This is April baseball, and I'm on the edge of my seat. A sentence I cannot wait to say out loud. Belly bombs are back. I think that was his first hit of the entire season, but at least he made it count. Just please, Belly, do that 39 more times. Thank you very much. But here comes the Reds, who immediately tie it after Will Myers and Kevin Newman combined for three RBIs in the very next frame. Both teams, they traded a few RBI ground outs to make it a 4-4 ball game when Eric Hosmer stepped in and grabbed Chicago's lead back. The Cubs, they really started to feel themselves, feel like they can hold on to this. Okay, no. Who is this guy? Jason Vossler out of nowhere showing the world that he can rake a little bit. Two home runs, six RBIs, and just four games. Derek Law, who was the Reds' seventh pitcher of the day, he nails down the save. Again, what a game, and we're not done yet because the Pirates and the Reds, another 7-6 ball game that had me on the edge of my seat as well. All I'm asking is that Cabrian Hayes keeps this up. Like, we need a 110 OPS plus season from Cabrian Hayes, and when you factor in his platinum defense, he could be a top 30 player in baseball by the end of 2023. I'm for sure gonna botch this name. Kanan Smith and Jigba, he delivers a two-run double. Those were big-time runs for the Pirates because I think those runs made the Red Sox offense angry. Devers, Yoshida, and Costas all connected for their first home runs of the season. Yoshida, he looks like he is going to be a real player for the Red Sox. In the blink of an eye, it's five to three Boston. Not so fast though, because offense is back. Offense is king in 2023, which makes me very happy. No one ever really seems to be out of a game because the pitch clock, it kind of causes mayhem. Same with the stolen bases. I just love what baseball has turned into in 2023. Brian Reynolds has a home run in back-to-back -back games. Pittsburgh, they keep it moving with an RBI single from Jack Sawinski. Then we get homers from Jason Del Lay and the third over the last 24 hours from Brian Reynolds. If he keeps playing like this, Pittsburgh is going to get a haul at the trade deadline. Anyways, Pittsburgh, they sent it to the ninth with their lead still intact. And David Bednar, he's nasty. He strikes out too. He collected his second save already of the season. Now, after this White Sox and Giants recap, I do want to kind of nerd out about Luis Robert Jr., but we have to show San Francisco's seven home runs. Jock Peterson, 432 feet. Michael Conforto, his first home run since 2021. I could not be happier for him. Tyro Estrada, that's three home runs. There's four courtesy of Mike Yastrzemski. Okay, never mind. Make it five already. This one courtesy of David VR, who flat out rakes. More on him in just a second. Anthony Desclafani, he cooled off the Sox offense. San Francisco got their sixth home run on a grand slam from David VR, but I've also heard it said as David Villar, so if you can correct me in the comments, I would appreciate that. But David has 10 home runs since September 2nd of last year. That is the second most of all of Major League Baseball, so keep a lookout for David Villar. Bryce Johnson hit a home run. I don't even know who that is, but good for him. So obviously the Giants, they went easy 12 to three. They hit seven home runs in a single game. Kind of some question marks around Michael Kopeck. But one more player I want to talk about, Luis Robert Jr. He made another stupid catch in the outfield. He hit another home run. Luis could be a top 10 player. I'm going to go ahead and say this. Could be a hot take. He could be a top 10 player this year if he plays 150
155 games. The Brewers and the Mets faced off and five different Brewers hitters drove in an RBI, but none was bigger than a rookie swing later in the fifth inning. Now, Brian Anderson has always kind of been a Mets killer. He stayed the course with his new team, the Brewers. Milwaukee added a few more when, look at this, the rookie Bryce Terang, who replaced Keston Hira. He goes yard for the first time in his young career and he secures his first grand slam on the same swing. That's gotta feel so good, especially because they chose him over a guy that could rake Keston Hira. Can't forget about Freddie Peralta. Super excited that he's back and healthy. Seven strikeouts over six shutout innings. I know that it's only been a handful of games, but this Brewers team right now on paper, they have done a lot to impress me and they are looking very formidable. CT3, Mr. Chris Taylor connected for his first home run. Hopefully he can keep it going after being pretty bad in 2022. JD Martinez, he's having a weird start to the season because he has four RBIs, which is cool, but he is leading the league in strikeouts with nine already. Anyways, James Outman, he is showing out and then some to begin 2023. He had two RBI triples in this one, so sit tight. There's the first one. We'll show the second one later on. He scores on a Miguel Vargas single right before Jason Hayward. He goes yard. I thought Jason Hayward was like 36, 37 years old. He's only 33, so maybe there's some gas left in the tank. James Outman, he laid out his second RBI three-bagger of the day. He is tied for third in F war in all of Major League Baseball. Will Smith, he is primed for a huge year. Two home runs, seven RBIs, and seeing a beach ball in the batter's box. The Dodgers, they went easy, 13 to four. Another big time scoring game. Austin Riley nearly matched Giancarlo Stanton's 485 foot home run. He had 33 home runs in 2021, 38 in 2022. Can he get into the 40 club? I bet you that he can do it. Ozzy Albies, he's still just 26 years old. He's trying to turn the page and kind of win over those haters. Speaking of haters, Ronald also has a lot of haters as well. He was basically written off as overrated because he didn't go 30-30 after tearing his ACL. Two home runs already. Olsen and Darno, they grab a few last minute RBIs right before Paul Goldschmidt hit a solo shot. I mean, the Cardinals, they got bullied yesterday, but it's Paul Goldschmidt. I gotta show it. The Royals and the Blue Jays, I mean, I feel like we need a team of scientists and engineers kind of led by Tony Stark or Bruce Banner to figure out what has happened to Jose Brios. There needs to be a full-blown study on his arm or something because his mechanics are all out of whack. I mean, as you can see, the Royals, they didn't see a Jose Brios on the mound. They saw a personal batting practice thrower. It's almost like the aliens from Space Jam came down and stole his powers. The Royals offense, they have the tools to be legit, but I feel like that was more Jose Brios being broken as opposed to the Royals teeing off. But then again, maybe I'm kind of disrespecting the Royals. Jose Brios allowed him one more base runner before leaving the game. And there's MJ Melendez with a missile, 445 feet, 113 miles an hour. Shout out to Brady Singer, by the way. I really didn't have time to talk about him. One earned run over five innings against the Blue Jays. That's not easy, but he did it. Also, I'll show this clip right here, just like we did with the Cardinals and Paul Goldschmidt. Bo Bichette, he hit a home run, but it didn't really mean anything. The Gold Glovers were dropping barrels to start this one. Okay, Max Kepler, he has never won a Gold Glove, but he is fantastic defensively. That is his first home run of the year, and then, I mean, this could bring a tear to my eye. My friend Joey Gallo, his third over the last 24 hours, his swing has not looked this confident in years. I need 40 home runs from him this year. Trevor Larnick had himself a fine day as well. He roped an RBI triple right before for Jose Miranda and Carlos Correa extended the lead to eight nothing. Those are the first two RBIs of the season for Correa. This was all for Tyler Maley, who I still can't believe the Twins actually got for pretty much pennies on the dollar. Five innings, one earned run, seven strikeouts. He is nasty. There's Trevor Larnack's first home run of the year, so he had a triple and home run. A lot of total bases in this one. Jeffers grabbed one, and the Minnesota Twins are completely locked in. They are a perfect 4-0 to begin the season. They look amazing. Okay, so like, did the Rays find the next Babe Ruth or something? Have they done it again? This Luke Rayleigh kid has been on fire for basically two months now. That's his first of the season. And this comes after he hit 330 in spring with five home runs, 14 RBIs, and 43 at bats. They fixed Isaac Paredes. They fixed Yandy Diaz. They fixed Harold Ramirez. They turned Drew Rasmussen into a legitimate machine on the mound. He looked like all of us with a pumpkin in October, just carving away six scoreless, seven strikeouts. Ray's starters to begin the season over the first four games. They have a 0.39 ERA. They are the third team ever to have a sub one ERA and 30 plus strikeouts through four games. And just for the fun of it, Luke Rayleigh, he teed off again for his second long ball. The Rays, they haven't lost yet either. Honestly, they might go 162 and 0. Okay, that's not going to happen, but they're really good. Over the first few recaps, we really went in on the Orioles pitching staff and shout out to them. They finally came through. They put the team on their back after Kyle Bradish. He looked nasty early, but he took a 104 liner to the leg. He had to come out again. He was looking nasty, but shout out to Tyler Wells. He ended up throwing five shutout for the Orioles. Baltimore's offense, it came on two swings. Gunnar Henderson, that young kid, he 
flexes his stupid pop by going the other way. And then Jorge Mateo, he hit a no doubter. He enjoyed it, his first home run. Jorge Mateo, by the way, has a home run and four stolen bases. He could be a huge fantasy guy if your league does not have strikeouts. Felix Bautista, he finally looked like the mountain. Two strikeouts, his second save. Again, I'm gonna say it one more time. I am falling in love with baseball all over again. The stolen bases, the offense, they're back. I'm so excited about it. Thank you all so much for watching. Your support means everything to me. I'm kind of mind blown right now, but I'll catch you guys tomorrow for another recap.